Yes people, how's it going? I hope you're all well. So, a new adventure today from Team McGrath. We are here in North Wales in a little place called Clanfro Clanfroven. Clanfroven. I think that's how you pronounce it. Two L's, Clanfroven. So it's not Lanfroven, as uh, the English would usually say. I've done my research and it's Clanfroven. Froven? Froven? Clanfroven. Clanfroven. I'm going to go with that. Do correct me, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Now, what are we doing here? Well, let's have a look here first. As you can see, there is a caravan here. Now this caravan is fully off grid, right? This is not your normal standard caravan. First and foremost, you can see here that the water is supplied by a rainwater butt, which is fed from this pipe, which runs across there. Inside here, if I can pull this up, oh, you'll see there's a gas canister. So this is both fed by water, rainwater and gas. So it's fully off grid. Aside for this, we also have nice little things like this, a nice little table and chair area. And we also got a little shed here. I can show you around properly in a minute. And this is where the rainwater is collected and fed up as well. Oh, almost tripped over. And a place to have a barbecue. Now the cool thing about this place as well, is that this entire woodland here that we're currently in all five acres of it is actually usable by us there's no one else staying here there is a bunkhouse over there and uh it's you know usually rented out by people but we've just happened to time it incredibly well we're the only people here in this entire area so as such we get this entire woodland to ourselves and if you know much about team mcgrath or our channel we love a good bit of nature and scenery and we don't often spend much time in the uk and it's a beautiful land and wales is very pretty now it's my first time in south wales sorry north wales but i've been whoa almost stripped over been to uh south wales before i went to a place called nantimoel i'll spell that on the screen for you <laughs> um and it was uh not far from bridge end where one of my favourite bands actually is from Bullet For My Valentine. So, repping. I love that band. So, yeah, this is what it looks like. The woodland, it's got a nice little, you know, area here. And I don't know how well you'll see this. I'll flip the camera so we can get a good view. But we've also got over here a compost toilet, which is really cool. I'd imagine using this at night may be a bit of a challenge. And Tammy forgot to lock it. <laughs> what is she like? But there you go. I don't know how well you can see that. But basically that's... And you know, you've got a biodegradable toilet roll. You've got a... I'm not going to show you because you probably don't want to see. But inside there there's a funnel. Which is where the liquids go. And then the solids are covered by sawdust over here. We've got a sink and a, uh... hello, you oh, can't see me very well today. Um, a little mirror and that sink is also fed by the, uh, by the rain, same rainwater system as well. So I'm going to close this because even though we've got this place to ourselves, it's still good, good uh, practice to do so. And as you can see here, this is also fed by rainwater. So yeah, we've picked uh, quite a good time to come. The weather's holding up. I can feel a few splodges of rain, which uh, of course in the caravan will be pretty cool. But it's not often we uh, do many of these uh, kind of more wild experiences. Now, obviously this is not wild camping. Um, it's more kind of an off grid situation. Um, we're not in a caravan park, we're in a, pl a plot of land. I'm by a lovely gentleman named Tim. Oh, how cool is that? Nice. I'm by a lovely guy named Tim. We got to meet him actually. Um, he is, uh, he's from the uh, North Wales area, but he's actually lived most of his life uh, in Wirral, near Liverpool, um, teaching. So he's a really cool guy. And this is the bunkhouse I was telling you guys about. Obviously I don't have access to this, but you can see the bunkhouse and you can see it's also starting to rain as well. And then just over here, 
we've got some cool little areas where we can light some uh, fires and eat some food, sit around singing cheery camp songs with each other. And this wood is massive. I've got to be careful here because over here, I don't know if you can make it out, there's a bit of a, a bit of like a bog kind of area. But Tom's in the car. We're planning to go to a place called Port Madog. I think that's how you pronounce it. I do apologise to my Welsh brethren if I'm wrong, but it's uh, one of our nearest towns that has a Lidl and a Tesco. And hey, look, you've also got a little mini allotment here. And the guy who run this, runs this place, Tim, also uh, runs a canoe business and an adventure business. Look at this cool little place. And there's the Welsh flag representing. I love the Welsh flag. It's such a cool flag, guys. I love Wales. Beautiful country. I really like the people of Wales. And each time I've uh, been to Wales, I've always uh, had a good time. And uh, my stepson is actually coming here to South Wales to study at Cardiff University. So hopefully I can uh, explore Cardiff as well. So I've not been to Cardiff yet. But this is the name of the place. I'm gonna open it up. I apologize. I think it's Covid Aubrey. Covid Aubrey, Aubrey, I can't. I do apologize. So I have to correct me in the comments, but here's some history. And some more information there if you're interested. There you go if you want to read on it. And then again, loads of stuff around here. That's useful. So as well, we're not actually far from Snowdonia where we're currently staying. I think it's like 20 minutes down the road that way. So in the next video, we're going to be doing some hiking around Snowdonia. But today we're going to show you what it's like to spend a bit of time in an off-grid situation in North Wales. And what we're going to do now is head over to Port my dog and go and get a uh, some provisions, some supplies, so we can have a barbecue. And then we'll show you around the caravan and show you what the setup's like and uh, discuss how that all works. So let's get ourselves over now to the nearest big, uh, big supermarket and uh, let's go and get some provisions. Let's do it. barbecue is going to be on the cards now what do you reckon Sam? No, it's raining. It's uh, started raining and uh, we weren't actually expecting this because uh, it wasn't forecasted but we've got an Audi over there, we've got a Lidl over there, we'll probably go to, I don't know, should we go Audi or Lidl? Which one? Uh, I've punched, right, punched in you I've punched in Lidl so we can go to Lidl but uh, we might have to cook something and then maybe do a, uh, a barbecue tomorrow and uh, that'll be in the next video so uh, we just have to see how it goes, guys. But this is uh, Port Madog. Because it's pronounced differently on the. Uh, you have arrived. They pronounce it Port Madog in, uh, on the uh, sat nav, which is interesting. But that's the view. Very nice. So let's get ourselves inside this little and uh, let's get all we need to get. Well, guys, sorry if you hear uh, the aircon going, but uh, this is the current situation we've got. Right, so it's uh, somewhat raining a little bit. The views are still very much impeccable, but um, it's uh, yeah, it's picked up a little bit. We weren't expecting this, but what we did was we actually did go and get uh, bits for a uh, for a barbecue, just to be on just to be on the safe side. You never know, you know. Uh, Welsh weather, if it's anything like English weather, is going to be uh, quite spontaneous. So uh, you know, I thought we'll grab them anyway. Look at this! Whoa, look at that! Oh, very nice. Um, beautiful um so if if the weather's anything like uh, the weather we get in england then of course yeah it'd probably be beaming down with sunshine in a minute but you know we did uh, we did get some barbecue bits but if it doesn't work out and we can't barbecue and we're just cooking like normal we've got some traditional welsh, bit, uh, welsh bits we're on our way back now to the uh, caravan and uh, we'll show you around so you can see what it's like inside there so and i've got a funny story to tell you whilst we're there as well so let's go and do it there we go guys, this is a good example of uh, Welsh <laughs> roads. Um, it's uh, yeah, very, very, very hilly in Wales. It does live up to its reputation. But um, yeah, rather than get back to the caravan and tell you the story, I'll just tell you right now actually, because it's so funny. 
I've got to tell you. So I am, believe it or not, terrified of heights. Now I know you might have seen me do a cable car in Switzerland and stuff if you've watched the channel before, and that's fine. I, I felt all right in that. I could deal with that somehow, despite the fact I was thousands of feet in the air. But the one thing we probably didn't consider when we came to Wales was just how many mountains and stuff there are and just how many roads are carved into these mountains. So Tam was driving and out of nowhere we found ourselves driving, I don't want to sound a mountain because it wasn't a mountain, a massive 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 hill and the drop was significant. Continue on A4085 for half a mile. All right love, thank you very much. She, she loves the sound of her voice, she does. And we um, we uh, were driving through it and my massive fear of heights click kicked in and uh, before I knew it I was literally grabbed onto the seat like white knuckle ride and Tam was just like it's, it's fine mate I've got this under control I was like just just slow down a bit Tam <laughs> I looked down to the side of me I looked down there for instance and there was a massive massive drop I don't know what we was on and how far off the ground we were but it was very far so yeah we're uh, driving back into the place now so this is uh, the area we're in this is very very tucked away in a quarter of a mile you will arrive at your destination wonderful you can shut up now <laughs> so um yeah that that was uh, kind of a bit of a shock for me I mean, I should have really expected it, but yeah, there was just no barriers. There was no barriers at all, so there was this massive drop, and literally, there was like a bit of wire, like a little, a bit of wire just strung across, and I was like, um, I don't think that's gonna end well if we fall down there. But anyway, um, this is the place that we're staying in, Kuid Obri, however you pronounce it, and uh, yeah, it's nice and tucked away, very, very remote and out of the way. So uh, let's go and have a look inside this caravan and uh, let's see what it's like. So we're back now and uh, we can show you the caravan. Tom's just unlocking it as we speak and uh, give you the grand tour of the caravan. So uh, let's go and have a look. So uh, just step in here and we might need a bit of lighting, Tam. There we go. Right. So we can't have too many lights on because currently it's uh, it's powered by a, I'll let you go this way Tam, so I can squeeze past you. So it's uh, powered by a, I'll just quickly show you, I'm gonna flip it over. It's powered by this uh, voltage situation here. So obviously I think it's run on like a 12 volt, there you go, it's a 12 volt battery. So we can't go too crazy. Uh, inside here, just, uh, pretty cool isn't it uh, inside here we've got a uh, I believe it's a chemical toilet and that's gonna be interesting that is I say camp shower which is obviously fed through the uh, <clears throat> the rainwater so obviously I don't think anything's gonna heat that up which is fine because uh, you know you've got to do it the, the proper way got a bed here so I'll just move out a little bit for you so you can see it so we brought our own bed in so you're supposed to bring your own bed in so we did that and then if you to be honest it really is just formed of cushions again i'm not sure how we're going to be able to see that but it's just formed of cushions that you put together and then this uh down here pulls out like so so and it's a good height uh, I'm, I'm just a little under six foot and uh, uh that's i've still got a bit of leg room and then of course we get a nice view outside when we wake up. We've got an oven, uh, which gas, gas powered. This is really interesting. This is a gas powered fridge. So we had to turn on a gas. We had to, if you see here, look, there's this little thing here. We had to kind of push it in, light it. And then we had to make sure, I think uh, this here was set to van and the pump was is set to pump. So. We got stuck on that for a while and then we got a little wood burner as well so that'll be very useful uh, if it gets cold got some storage where tam's sitting that can also be made into a, a separate a seat a uh, little single bed as well so and then you got it comes with like cutlery and whatnot washing facilities so this is rainwater fed mind you so uh there you go but that is i'm not gonna obviously run that too heavy but 
yeah it's got everything you need really i mean you know when you're when you're doing a uh an off-grid kind of camping situation you're not gonna have it's not gonna be luxury glamping exactly but my lord i'll take this over glamping any day this is awesome i mean how often do you get to sit in a homemade hut in a cool little caravan like that you know surrounded by woodlands like this so we'll show you what our shopping hall was tam do you mind passing me the bag love or is that in the car still no, yeah. oh cool <laughs> i thought we'd have to run off to the car so i'll show you our shopping hall and uh show you what we got all right so we ended up going to two places we went to tesco and we went to uh audi, audi in the end we was going to go to Lidl, but then last minute we decided to go to Aldi. And to be honest as well, we was looking for uh, Glamorgan sausages because I love Glamorgan sausages. I usually have to make them from scratch. But I thought, well, I'm in Wales. There's going to be Glamorgan sausages somewhere, surely. I looked everywhere around Tesco and there was none. So, I don't know. And then there was nothing as well traditional, to, 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 like traditionally Welsh in, uh, uh, in Tesco either, which I found a bit surprising because when you go to Tesco's in different places, even regionally in the uk you'll find that they sell things that are specific to that region so for instance when we went to tesco in uh, scotland they were selling a lot of scottish products but for some reason in wales there was actually more english products than welsh products which i found interesting but anyway rub it in on a bit let's show you what we got so we've got some chicken drumsticks these are pre-cooked obviously so what we would do is if we do end up having a barbecue we'll just slam them on there crisp at the skin that'll be beautiful we've got a nice garlic and herb dip to dip all of them We've got some bratwurst. We'll cook them up because we're going on a little bit of an excursion tomorrow, so uh, they'll make a good breakfast tomorrow. Um, so this uh, this ain't all going to be eaten tonight, by the way. I know there's a lot of food, but we're going to save some of this for tomorrow because we're going on a bit of a hike. Obviously, some cheese for the uh, you know the burgers. Obviously, got some burger buns. I'm doing this a bit backwards. I usually show you the meat, but I'm just pulling out what's in the bag gotta keep it contained there's no containers so we brought some foil so we can keep it all wrapped and you know warm now getting onto the proper stuff so guys we're in wales we found some proper welsh lamb leg uh, steaks look at that cumru cumri i think that means wales i can't remember i'm saying that means uh, wales and as well we uh, it's really cool actually so i if you know me right if you've never seen this channel before one thing I always mention is that one thing I like to do is I like to learn the language of everywhere I go to. Now with Wales, and to me, honest, I was considering learning a couple of phrases of Welsh, but then I thought, hmm, I don't really know how many people speak Welsh in Wales. I don't know what the population of Wales would speak Welsh, so I don't know. I've heard mixed things about that. So you have to let me know in the comments uh, if how how common Welsh is spoken. But anyway. Went into, uh, went into uh, Audi and the first thing we noticed was people speaking Welsh and it was a beautiful language to listen to. Very, very nice. So, uh, very intriguing. Might have to try and learn a few words. So, of course, along with our lamb leg, we've got some traditional pork sausages. So, this is a Welsh butcher called Edwards. So, hopefully they're good because we can't get them in England. So, you know, trying to, stick, trying to keep things, uh, you know, authentic as we can. <clears throat> Got some smash burgers purely because like we can just bang them straight on the grill, um, cook them straight up, no no wasting time. A lot of this is fast cooked stuff to be honest. And then of course, got some coleslaw to go alongside it. And this all came up to like we've got a couple of snacky bits as well, and this all came to like thirty quid, so it's not too bad. And then the pièce de résistance is I got a Welsh double dragon ale so i've never tried a welsh ale before you can't get, get this in the uh, in england as far as i know this is pretty authentic by the looks of it though so i'm going to enjoy that later as well and uh, give you my thoughts on a traditional welsh ale but i mean you just can't beat it guys you know what i mean getting out there into into nature you know i sound like a bit of a hippie sometimes but like listen to this i don't know if you can hear this I'm trying to show you and Tom's like, yeah, let's put the let's put the stuff in the bag as loudly as I can. <laughs> really get that in there. Um but it's it's there's nothing better than getting back into nature, you know what I mean? Back back to our roots. You know what I mean? I, I love it. And uh I uh 
I want to try and improve my fitness as well so obviously going out on hikes and uh, little walking trails is always quite useful um, the drive up here was interesting as I say uh, Birmingham when we got to about that point near the spaghetti junction I think it was things started to slow down there's quite a bit of congestion but we made it through I think the journey took us like five hours in total six, six. hours six hours roughly six hours. When, when you include a few stops that well you know, just had the one stop didn't you yeah. so with the stop and the congestion six hours to get here from Peterborough where we're from so it's not too bad but uh what we're gonna do is uh we're gonna wait for this rain to clear up and if it doesn't then we'll cook this stuff just manually and uh if it does then we'll do it on the uh the, the old barbecue but let's show you what we're gonna be working with here so it's just here so we've got some uh, we've got like a little barbecue set up here so we just stick it in there we've got a couple of barbecues dotted around actually and then just inside this uh whoa blimey nature is uh very unforgiving <laughs> trying to trip me up i was like i hear some weird noises and i realized there's some cows in this uh, field nearby and the guy who runs this place kindly provided some seating chairs some firewood look like i think there's some fire starters in here somewhere as well um fire lighters so yeah, you got everything you need, really. You know what I mean? He's 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 thought of everything. Our friend Tim. You know what I mean? He's he's covered all bases. So we uh we have the facilities we need to to carry out our little uh our little barbecue. But yeah, as I say, you know, we're hoping to do something a bit more authentic. So we're going to get those chairs out of there, sit by there. Or there's also another little camping area over there that I showed you earlier. So we might go and sit over there. But we're just hoping for the weather to kind of clear up. But now we're going to just chill in the caravan, make ourselves a cup of tea and uh, just see what the uh, the weather holds. So I think we've got, what time is it now? It's currently coming at 8 o'clock. It start, starts to get dark in Wales currently this time of year. We're in, uh, we're in June, aren't we, Tam? <laughs> uh, we're in June, so it starts to get dark at about 10pm. So we've still got roughly about two hours worth of daylight. Though we do have a lantern if worse comes to worse. But <sighs> let's see how we go with this good old British weather. All right guys, so just an update. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can see, and it's still raining. And uh, to be honest, as I say, the we've only got about an hour until uh, until we start to lose daylight as a result of the fact that we, uh, we're stuck in heavy traffic. So we got here a bit later than planned. Um, so yeah unfortunately we're not going to get to have our barbecue experience today but do stick with us because in the next video we will be sure to uh to go and do that um so tom's just in there prepping now i'm actually wearing my slippers so <laughs> i can't venture too far but uh whilst we've still got a wee bit of daylight let's uh let's see what we've got around here i can see some cows on them uh, on the field over there but uh and if you've watched uh, some of our other videos, I've told you uh, about some of the uh, sc stories about cows. People that I know and uh, whatnot have been attacked by them. So if they've got calves, they will attack. So you've got to be careful with cows. But uh, what we're going to do instead is we're just going to cook like normal. But look at these lovely, beautiful things. And uh, the plan for tomorrow pretty much will be to... Uh, go off and, and look around Snowdon. Now the strange thing is, it's uh, currently starting to kind of get a bit foggy. But usually you can actually see Snowdon in the background over there. So that's pretty cool. But uh, it's just crazy to think that I've got free reign of all this woodland. And it's only spitting slightly, but because to be honest, as I say, because we're gonna lose daylight shortly and there's not much lighting around this place, it'll be absolutely pitch black. And we've got a lantern. And it'd be enough to maybe get us to the uh, compost loo over there. But it won't be enough to uh, give us a good amount of ample lighting to cook a fully blown barbecue. But as I say, we're not going to cook all the bits that we brought. Um, we're going to reserve some of it and you know, cook it maybe tomorrow. But look at that. So if you want to hire a canoe, by the way, Snowdonia Outdoors, that's the information. Do give him a contact he's a fantastic bloke a really nice guy respect him really nice guy um you know he's made a great deal of effort around here to set this all up and uh, he was saying to me as well 
that he set up some trail cams so he captures some of the wildlife around here as well which is pretty cool and you can see as well that he's into rock climbing and stuff never done rock climbing before but uh yeah something uh if you're into then you can do that as well but what has my thoughts been so far on both whales and this experience well i've enjoyed it actually i think it's been really nice um wales is <laughs> incredibly beautiful um port my dog um was wow really really nice actually you know a little small town everyone was really friendly um and you had the the mountains all around you it's just a beautiful place to look at and uh, the people of wales are really friendly um i really do love the welsh um people you know i think they're really cool and again a lot of my favorite bands so much good music has come from wales actually if you're into the metal scene uh which me and tammy are you know you've got skin dread um funeral for a friend a bullet for my valentine yeah you've got loads of different bands that come from uh wales um you know and uh you know they've contributed quite a bit to uh to the culin culinary world as well as i mentioned you've got glamorgan sausages so they're really really good if you've never tried them uh i don't think i'm about to buy them to be honest if i can't get them in wales then where am i going to get them so uh you might have to make them yourself but well worth trying i've made them before they're really good welsh lamb as well so i'm not sure what we're cooking up today i think we're going to make the smash burgers and the uh what do you call it the chicken uh, because they're quicker to do but yeah tom's there cooking up a storm as we speak and what i'll do actually whilst we're here is i'll try some of this uh welsh uh ale and give you my thoughts come do you mind just holding that bottle for me please love you're a diamond thank you so welsh ale double dragon let's get outside so we've got a bit of better lighting oh let's see what some welsh ale is like so oh wow <laughs> that's actually pretty damn good respect whales you're pulling out the a game there guys well good man i actually prefer ale to beer i tried stout the other day for the first time as well i really liked stout I've had a Guinness before, obviously, which uh, I believe is stout, but that's the only one I'd ever had. And they called it, what is it, a meal in a glass? A meal in a glass, what a strange name. But then it's quite thick, isn't it? Quite a thick consistency, fills you up, but it's got a nice, uh, nice, quite, quite a dark flavor. It's hard to explain, like a dark beer flavor, like quite a, quite malty. It's really nice. Eighteen seventy-eight Welsh beer, a oh, Welsh ale. Sorry, should I say? So, uh, oh, there's one other thing we've got as well. Actually, that is uh, quintessentially Welsh. Do we have the Welsh cake, Tam? In here? In the bag. In the bag. Let's have a look, guys. I'll apologise for the poor lighting. I should be able to put one more light on for you. There you go. So, uh, in the bag here somewhere. I can't remember which one it is one of these uh oh i think i found them here we go guys welsh cakes so welsh cakes like i guess the closest thing we would have oh blimey key tripping over i'm gonna come out here because the lighting's better uh, the closest thing we have in the uh, in england is a scone it's like a flatter version um and they're really good so we're going to probably take these out hiking with us tomorrow um, when we go and visit Snowdonia for the first time. So do keep an eye out for that video. That video will come after this one. Um, but yeah, I'm just a bit disappointed uh, that we couldn't do a barbecue today. I mean, these things happen. It's only a slight bit of drizzle. It's not going to kill us, but it's more the daylight because, you know, when you do a barbecue, you want to take your time. You want know, to really cook it nice and slow, really let the flavours infuse. You know what I mean? And really... To be honest, well, you know, I mean, you just, barbecues like you know, so 
you can throw it all on and stuff and get it done or you can really take your time yeah it's a pride thing you know you've got to do a good job of a barbecue you've got to really take your time and really get get the right, right chart i don't know what i'm talking about guys <laughs> but it's more the daylight situation uh, if we lose daylight then you know that'll be uh i'll add a layer of complexity and as i say because i don't know how dark it'll get around here i don't know uh if it'll be worth even trying to spin it up um regardless though tomorrow we will do it because it's not everyday we're in wales and to be honest guys as well because we've been driving for quite a while we just want to eat something and just chill but tomorrow we have a bit more energy i say that but i'm thinking about going all the way over to us no don't need to hike we're not going to climb it by the way just to let you know we're certainly not fit enough to do that but let's continue strolling this woodland together look at that oh cool it's a really it's a really unique project that tim's got here actually it's a really unique idea you know it's uh it feels like a labor of love he's really put his heart and soul into this place let's go down here i haven't been down here yet <laughs> doing this as i say in slippers so do forgive me if i uh i'm going a bit slow I just realised I brought these Welsh cakes with me. Going on a little excursion. Tell me be there with the burgers all cooked and thinking, where the hell's he gone again? I've got a bad habit of doing this. But once we've got a bit of daylight, let's go and explore a bit more. Why not? So, as I say, I love a good, uh, a good bit of uh, wandering around in the woods. Not so much when it's pitch black, mind you. You know, I've seen enough horror films to get paranoid. <laughs> but, uh, oh, that's interesting. We've got another loo here, Com another compost loo. He must be building that currently. So there's a few more options because uh, bear in mind as well, as I said, <clears throat> when you uh, come here, oh, look, some mushrooms growing. Mushrooms are a tough one. It's hard to know if they're uh, poisonous. You don't want to just go on and pick in mushrooms, do you? I'm quite interested in foraging actually i'd like to learn more there's a guy on youtube really good he's called a, a t well youtube it's where we are currently uh, called atomic shrimp so he's a really cool cool guy he's got kind of like a dad vibe like teaching you how to forage and how to cook with foraged items so if you're interested in that don't get can't give him a watch as well he's got a lot more subscribers than us though so <laughs> i don't know why i'm plugging him but hey we're a community out here and we've got to help each other. Got some chairs here. I'll uh, park myself here for a minute. And let's just have a look at this for you. Look at that, guys. Look, it's the most the simple things in life, isn't it? You know what I mean? Beautiful nature. Back in there with the wilds. He mentioned, uh, Tim mentioned that there's a uh, padlock there. <laughs> He mentioned that there's quite a lot of owls around here as well so we should be treated to some owl sounds later on in the evening hopefully i think there's uh he mentioned as well there's mice i don't mind mice i actually find them quite cute uh, i don't know why everyone's so bothered around them and spiders as well seen quite a few spiders i absolutely love spiders i actually used to be terrified of spiders once upon a time and then uh one day i just kind of went well you know we don't exactly live in Australia, do we? <laughs> the spiders aren't going to be too bad here. You know, so, uh, yeah. As I say, it's uh, certainly an interesting experience. I'd recommend it. I'll put a link in the comments, or sorry, in the description for this place if you're interested in visiting. It's quite, it's, we've got a really good deal as well. It's, we got it for £50 a night. I'm assuming it's the off season. Um, but yeah, we've got a good deal on it. And of course, there's also that little hut there you can stay in i think that can do up to six people we were saying let's see how tam's getting on how you doing love she in hand cooking up a storm there what sausages are there again they're the welsh ones aren't they yeah, the, welsh. the welsh sausages we shall give them a try as well and give you our thoughts on them but uh yeah as i say guys this is what it looks like this is a caravan experience this is the bed <laughs> And this is the view that we will look out onto. And uh, thought I heard some uh, 
owls starting up, but not yet. Look at that, that's cool. A tree stump growing in the ground. So I'm, ru I'm rubbing it on now. I just uh, love nature. I wanted to share this experience with you all, but let's wait for these sausages to be cooked. I've given you an, uh, my thoughts on the ale. I've told you what I thought of Wales. We'll try some Welsh sausages. And then, as I say, next video, we'll be going to do some exploration around Snowdonia. So let's give these sausages a try. Here we go, guys. So not complete glitz and glamour, but hey, a Welsh beer, some Welsh sausages, smash burger, and a lovely view, I don't think I'm doing too bad. So let's try a Welsh sausage. Mmm, quick to perfection. That is beautiful. That is really nice. Really meaty. It's got like quite a coarse grind. Tom's there living it up, chilling in the hut. And uh, it's a shame we're going to fire this up tomorrow, hopefully. And uh, fingers crossed. I don't think we've got any company all week, so that no, place there. We're the only ones here all week. All weekend. So, there we go, guys. A Welsh off grid camping experience in private woodland for 100 quid for two nights. Madness. Airbnb just goes to show what happens if you shop around. So I'm going to enjoy my beer, I'm going to enjoy my food, and I'm going to enjoy some more of this stunning Welsh scenery around me before we lose daylight. And then tomorrow we're going to head off and go and explore Snowdonia and perhaps some of the uh, surrounding Welsh areas as well. So please do join us if you're interested in that. But I just want to say thank you very much for watching today's video. As always, we hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, we hope we've inspired you to come and have an adventure yourself because it's always worth it. So again, have a great day. Take care. See you soon, people.